hear me, that your identity should not be built on an industry opinion or a social media following because that is shifting sand. You are worthy, my friend, because there is life in you. There is breath in you. You are a human being and your identity is not a casting type. Ready to go learn how to live healthier, wealthier and wiser as an artist in showbiz? Hey, I'm Lara Bianca Pilcher. I'm crazy about helping artists to live out their creative dreams and nurture themselves at the foundation of their creative career. I'm an artist and actor and showbiz educator with over 20 years in the arts and entertainment industry in London, Australia and now Atlanta, USA. I'm here to show you how to navigate this topsy-turvy world called showbiz, uncover the secrets of success, unlocking the powerful artist you are. I've done a lot, performed, worked in TV, film, radio, stage, produced, directed, choreographed, acting, singing, voice work, musical theatre, dance company, toured, moved, casting, auditioned, self-tape, teaching, press, critics, branding, marketing, side hustles and all the hoo-ha while maintaining a happy marriage with two gorgeous kids. And there will only be real talk here, friends. Think of this podcast as a masterclass in helping you build your creative career while also learning how to holistically navigate the artist's life. This is the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise Artist Podcast. This episode is about coping with body image issues as performers because body image approval feels like an overwhelming destination for many performers, particularly those who have encountered years of struggle against their body. And I wanted to start with my own story, which is a little bit messy, (laughs) not pretty, but I understand the pressure on performers personally and what that does to your mind and behavior. So here's a little help from my story for coping with body image issues as a performer. And a little disclaimer, this is a very sensitive topic for many people. So please proceed with this episode with caution if eating disorders, disordered eating, body image conversations are particularly triggering areas for you. It's my hope that by sharing my story, it'll help you on your health journey. Of course, my story and the recommendations and tips and things I give you are definitely not a replacement for seeking help from a medical or a health professional if that is relevant to you. So let's start. Why is body image such a struggle for performers? Because all levels of performers struggle with poor body image. Not everybody, but a lot of performers. For some performers, it's aging. For others, it's their appearance, their hair, their build. For many, it's their weight. In fact, research reveals that over 75% of dancers feel pressure to lose weight, with tension often stemming from tight-fitting uniforms like leotards, I've been there, (laughs) and comparing ourselves in the mirror and the different costumes that we have to wear. But it's not just dancers, it's many performers, actors, triple threats, circus artists, etc. The struggle with being happy with their current bodies. There tends to be this belief in a lot of circles that the lower your body weight, it offers some sort of advantage for casting and audiences will favor the thinner person. Body image approval might feel like an overwhelming destination for performers who've encountered many, many years of struggle. But of course we know that times are changing and I am going to talk a little bit more about that shortly. But I think that it's important that performers seek support if you are struggling with things that are maybe a little destructive because it's been my experience that sometimes where we go for help the lived experiences help me personally better, particularly if they're a medical professional with lived experience. <laughs> Those who have overcome disordered eating, eating disorders or major body image struggles are who I've personally looked to for support in my health journey. Then I've layered in help from certified nutritionists and functional medicine coaches and go back one episode and you'll hear fantastic free advice about the art of healthy eating, which is from a certified nutritionist and it's fantastic for performers if that's relevant to you. My story of coping with body image issues as a performer is that when I was 13 years old, I was enrolled in a school's specialist dance program, which I auditioned to get into, and that included both academic and dance studies. And I spent every day 
of my teenage years in front of a studio mirror in a leotard and tights with a room full of other dancers doing the same thing. And of course, it was hard not to compare my appearance with others. My day was filled with wanting to reduce my size to be smaller. And I wasn't overweight. However, my body was changing from my little girl body to a woman's frame, aka puberty. I didn't realize that my build was not petite, but I was medium. And I was also quite tall. And no matter what I did, I couldn't change my bone structure, but I didn't see it as bone structure at 13. I just saw bigger than the dancer next to me. And I wasn't used to my new shape as I started to develop hips and curves. And of course, many dancers go through this, but it's difficult when you're in front of a mirror and in front of a room full of other people doing it at the same time. One day, I overheard the dancers in the program two years above me, they were my idols at that, at that point, discussing their weight control methods. One of them was already a magazine cover girl. She was stunning, so beautiful and so influential in our school. This dancer model shared how you can eat whatever you want and throw it up. And that's what she was doing. And the conversation was boastful and sounded to my 13 year old ears like a great idea. And I had never heard of such a thing. Long story short, I tried it. And that began my battle with bulimia. This triggered years of disordered eating, eating disorders, and a very unhealthy relationship with food. I later discovered that throwing up my food was not a good idea, and it was self-destructive and extremely harmful to my health. The effect of restrictive dieting on my body image as a dancer is that I didn't have the information I needed at that point to know what to eat and when. And I silently did the best I learned how to control my weight. And because there's so much shame around this area, quite often we don't ask for help when we need it because we don't want to admit that we haven't got it together in this area, particularly as performers. For me, when I was 13, I wouldn't eat until after my dance class because I thought my undernourished frame would look thinner in my 13-year-old opinion. If my dance class was at one o'clock that day, I would starve myself until then so I would look slimmer in the mirror. It was all consuming. And naturally, when you restrict food intake like that and do intense exercise, you usually feel very hungry afterwards. I would then feel so hungry that I'd binge eat entirely out of control in a trance-like state because survival mode is real and our body knows how to make us survive. Then I would feel horrible, of course, you know, and purge the food to avoid gaining weight. This actually caused me years of disordered eating, strict dieting and weight fluctuation. The mirror in the dance studio was not my friend at this stage of my life. And to make matters worse, teenage boys were very verbal about what they thought about the girls' bodies around them. And talk like this should never be allowed. One boy said, I want Lara's face with that girl's body. And he was referring to my best friend at the time. And those words ran deep into my self-image for decades after that day. The profound question hidden inside was why wasn't my body enough for his approval as it was? I believed it must be because I'm overweight. In hindsight, I realized it was because my friend was busty and wore tight tops and I did not. Yet I didn't see that at the time. Coping with body image issues as a performer is often met with healing from negative words spoken about us or to us as performers. We can often track it back to where it began, and I certainly can. I tried so many things and they don't work. Diets were all over magazine articles at this time in my life. Stick thin was worshipped as the ideal at this point in time in history. This period trophied the petite frame and anything outside of this was seen as failure, particularly for dancers. The messed up culture sometimes in the arts world doesn't help because my peers praised dancers for being skinny and other dancers looked up to them for their thin physiques. Not eating much was also admired and I've seen that in musical theatre as well. It's a messed up system. And, you know, today the world's improving. However, we know, particularly if you're an artist, that this issue for many performers is still a reality. I now realize that restricting food intake put my body into starvation mode. 
My overwhelming impulse to eat after starving myself was simply survival mode and my lower brain sent loud signals to me to eat and to eat a lot. This became the yo-yo journey of dieting, binging, purging, restricting, repeat over and over again. Often restrictive diets have this effect or similar and can result in weight gain in the long run as our body fights an unbalanced behavior cycle. Overcoming this unhealthy pattern has taken me decades, including the destructive thoughts behind it. My healing response to this way of eating was to eat adequately, then notice urges to overeat and purge and dismiss them, not fight them, but dismiss them. What works is a healthy eating plan. Because when my body is filled with healthy, balanced nutrition, not starving or overstuffed, it doesn't send overwhelming binge and purge messages, period. And as a performer, coping with body image issues was not as hard after I ate adequately and dismissed urges. Truth be told, I would never have had weight issues if I hadn't been dieting. Dieting and restricting caused my weight issues. I now focus on healthy, balanced eating plan and I don't diet. There's a mental switch. Yes, it can be argued they're the same thing, a healthy eating plan. The one is not rigid. One is flexible and it's very much the psychology behind what you're doing. But I do have a healthy eating plan and I do that because I know that when I eat healthy, it feeds my body and it helps me to feel good about myself, energy and all the other health benefits. Our bodies actually do restore to the correct weight for us personally when we eat regularly in a healthy, nutritionally balanced way. I know people are doing other things that work for them, but this this is what I actually know works for me. If you're struggling with disordered eating, there's a book that I really recommend and you can get it on my Amazon performers page and there's a link in the show notes. So just head to the article and you'll find that. After I healed the behavior and the patterns that were not serving me, I focused on my mind and my self-talk and my thoughts. I saw a psychologist for issues holding me back that had nothing to do with my diet. And quite often the patterns of behavior that we see are not always psychological, which, you know, it is for some, but for me, it wasn't. It was actually just bad patterns of behavior that I'd learned in order to cope in the dance world. You know, I had a mantra, a mantra when I was going into class that the mirror is not who I am. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and that this class that I'm going into will be therapeutic and not destructive in my life. And it took a long time to transform, but it's worth the work and the journey. We have our health and a body to live in and move in. And this can sometimes, you know, this can become something we are grateful for each day. And I realized that abusing my body like it was an enemy was counterintuitive to the gift of expressing myself creatively as an artist and the gift of life and the gift of health, which is everything. And I realized that the problem wasn't me. It was a toxic and broken industry and culture for promoting that beauty in this type of look was the only way. We can develop a healthy body image if we don't have it. And that's the good news. Although the world is improving and becoming more diverse in its industry representation of beauty and body image, I've still had many statements spoken to me in musical theatre classes and rehearsals in the last decade. Comments once from a singing teacher, first lesson, what are you going to do about your weight, Larry? You're too skinny for the fat rolls and too fat for the skinny rolls. And that cut. If only she knew how hard at that time in my life I was trying to be thin and how my eating disorder felt impossible to control at the time. This highly renowned teacher was of a generation where this was considered okay, and it's not anymore, friends, so don't tolerate it. If you hear that, it needs to be just called out. It's a red flag. Be careful what you let into your mind. I saw a post on social media by someone who said, until you can learn to control yourself around food, you'll have weight issues. And although, yeah, that's true, it is a shaming way of thinking. People with body image issues and disordered eating usually want more than anything to be well. And it takes a lot of help, work and healing of destructive thinking. 
you know, I'm married to a man who has never had a body image issue, weight issues, eats um, whatever he likes and has a great relationship with food. Everyone wants that, but not everyone has that set up in life. The performer's preoccupation with being slim and other things with body image, particularly slim, can create an unhealthy relationship with food, resulting in maladaptive eating patterns. Performers with body dysmorphia and eating disorders usually have a propensity like genetics, personality types, mental and environmental conditioning, or other elements that have caused that for them. The good news is is that we can develop healthy eating patterns and a healthy body image if it was not handed to us in life. The brain is plastic. It's not fixed, meaning our brain can change its structure and connections in response to stimuli such as food and how we look. Let us empower people to have total health and not shame them to. That's why help from people with lived experience can be very beneficial. Casting is challenging when it comes to our type. The industry, however, is changing and more body types are being accepted on TV and stage. However, there is still pressure to fit types in many circles, which can be challenging for a performer. We can have a healthy eating plan, work out and train to be our best, but if we don't fit a casting type, we need to learn to breathe deeply and tell ourselves, it's okay, it wasn't for me, but something else will be. Breathe in self-acceptance and say goodbye to the inner mean person voice that doesn't serve you as a performer or as a person. Our identity should not be built on an industry opinion or a social media following. That is like shifting sand. You are worthy, my friend, because there is life in you and breath in you and you are a human being. Your identity is not a type. And it's so good that celebrities are starting to speak out about coping with body image issues as performers. So I'm going to highlight a few different things that I've heard celebrities say in quotes online. And these quotes deal with some different things that performers um, have been going through and going through it publicly, which is fantastic. So body image and aging by model Paulina Porovitskova. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> The 57-year-old model spoke out about aging in a 2022 interview with People magazine, saying it's a movement that calls for more exposure. You know, guys, we're all going to get here. We're all going to age. No matter how young you are, you will age. So I think this is relevant for everyone because we all need to change this conversation in the industry. I felt ashamed, and I'm quoting her, to be aging And then on the other hand, you go, but I'm smarter and I'm better and I'm funnier and I'm more patient. And overall, as a person, I'm the best I've ever been. So I'm not ready to be dismissed. You don't get to dismiss me because I have some wrinkles and sags and gray hair now when I'm kind of fabulous and the most fabulous I've ever been. In fact, I'm going to just put it out there and go, you know what? This is me at my best. Deal with it. (laughs) Isn't that a fantastic quote? Thank you, Paulina, for such incredible, empowering words. Now I'm going to talk about one by Zac Efron um, when he did the role in Baywatch and it was in 2017 and the fans associated Efron with his chiseled physique. And he wants people to know that the body type that he had for that film actually ruined his health working towards this physical look as a goal. Many of his following on social media and just, you know, fans in general, wasted no moment speaking out when he later turned to more of a dad bod appearance because maintaining what he needed to for the film was very challenging. In an interview with Men's Health, Efron revealed that he never desires to resort to the processes it took to acquire that lifeguard body again and said that nobody should. He needed that look for the role but for him it came at the expense of using diuretics poor sleep overtraining and the same three meals a day and I know that many of us can relate to taking such extreme measures a quote by him is that he says I started to develop insomnia and I fell into a bad depression for a long time and it took six months after filming to feel normal again 
Zach also shared with Men's Health magazine that he is now looking forward to more profound transformations in his career and not just physical transformation. Thank you, Zach, for such empowering words. We all want to be looking forward to profound transformations in our careers and not just physical ones. So there's some resources I recommend to help you on your journey to wholeness with body image. The body positivity movement is officially mainstream. I'll never forget uh, seeing a Beyonce live performance and seeing dancers of all shapes and sizes and finally thinking, wow, this is incredible. These women are like real women, all different shapes and sizes. They were dancing, they were sexy, they were amazing and I just thought, you know, the world is definitely changing. The first step towards healing is to acknowledge that there is a problem and seek help. I've done this. And you know what? If you want to speak to someone, you can chat to me. I do coaching. It's like having a coffee chat with me. You can jump onto larabeandcapilcha.com website and just send me an email and we can book a session. You can also read books that I recommend. There's a few that have really helped me personally. And you can find them on my Amazon store. And my Amazon store link is actually in the show notes for this episode. And I just want to finish with saying that performers are often at increased risk of acquiring body image issues and eating disorders due to the perfectionism and the drive that we need to flourish in showbiz and the cruelty of opinions that flood social media about how we look on TV, film and stage. I couldn't believe when... I experienced after doing a a national television show in Australia, I couldn't believe how cruel people were. Um, You know, they watched something on TV and the things that they would say about me made me just feel like, am I not a human being? So I think we need to be very careful because what we see on TV isn't always someone's reality. Food and other destructive behaviors can be a means of self-soothing and numbing difficult emotions or a misused place of control when we feel out of control in our careers. And there is a way forward if you've toiled with poor body image, if you struggle with an eating disorder or you're inclined towards one, it's worth observing how you relate to nutrition and food because warning signs include eating in secret because you feel ashamed of what you're eating, how much you're eating or eating at all trying to numb yourself with food and we all like there is a healthy balance with this um, because my husband you know like I said he has no issues with food but there's some times where he's like I feel like party food and we all get like that that is not that's not imbalanced it's just a normal human being <laughs> but there is when we can get out of control and like in a trance like place where we're just feeding ourselves to numb feelings and I have been there my friends and I've overcome Overly thinking about what you can and can't eat and being very inflexible with what you will permit yourself to eat and when, all those things can be signs that, well, some of them, yes, arguably can be good things and performers do have a responsibility to look our bests. We can't be lazy. We need to be um, in our best shape for us personally, not holding up some image out there that we're meant to be, but saying, this is my best. I'm doing my best. I'm overcoming habits that are holding me back. I'm looking into my emotions and healing things that are causing me to be destructive with my patterns of behavior. But if you are spiraling into things that you know are unbalanced and you have any of those warning signs, then do seek help. If you detect them, pursue support. And I recommend seeking online support groups with lived experience if finances are an issue because there's many on social media that you can go to. Be careful what you put into your mind. There are great groups though. You can also look at support books that I've used to help me and I've told you that link will be in the show notes at my Amazon page. Listen to the free advice podcast episode and blog article with a registered nutritionist and health coach. That is one episode back from this one. See a dietitian or a therapist or a physician specializing in eating disorders. Please don't go it alone. It can take you so much longer to reach wellness without help. And we have a world of information and people able to help at the tip of our fingers in this age that I didn't have when I was 13 years old. But I look back and if I was going to speak to my 13 year old self, I would say, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are beautiful. You are sexy. You are capable. 
And you do not need to look like her because your frame is different and different is beautiful. And I want to encourage you to speak kind words to yourself, both your inner child self and who you are right now. And I'm with you on the journey, friends. I really am. If you need extra help from me, check out my coaching, larabiancapilcha.com. Head there to find out more about me. Can you jump on social media and say hi? I really want to connect with listeners. It can be very one way conversation and I'd love it to hear from you, hear your thoughts, hear your stories. I always respond. And if you haven't already, send me an email through larabiancapilcha.com so you can join my mailing list and we can stay in touch. It's time to say goodbye to the inner mean person, that inner voice that tells you that your body image, who you are, what you look like, what you sound like, whatever it is that bothers you about your body image, it's time to say to that inner mean voice, goodbye. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You badass, sexy, whatever you want to call yourself, you are fierce, my friend, because you are worthy. All right, bye for now. Hey, on my Facebook, there is a healthy, wealthy, wise artist group made up of a tribe of artists seeking to live the healthy, wealthy, wise artist life. They ask each other questions and throw around ideas. You can join the Healthy Wealthy Wise Artist Community private Facebook group at Lara Bianca Pilcher on Facebook under groups. Phew, today's masterclass is done. I love reaching back and saying I've done this and helping you learn the easy way. If you want more, head to larabiancapilcher.com for show notes, links, freebies, my blog, coaching and courses. And you can also head to my socials, Lara Bianca Pilcher on Instagram and Facebook. I'm also on Twitter and Pinterest. Thanks again for listening. Please leave a review on Apple Podcasts. That would mean the world to me and I'll give you a shout out. And of course, keep on living the healthy, wealthy, wise, artist living towards your dream life. Bye friends. P.S. Shout out to my hottie hubby Andrew Pilcher who does all the editing on this podcast.